Patrick Saunders, start us off. Hi, buddy. How are you today? Patrick, I'm well. Good. Uh, we have talked a lot to you about uh, Elias Diaz and his offense. Uh, we talked a little bit less about his defense. And I was curious, he threw out uh, uh, Albies last night. I think it was only the third time mm -hmm. Albies has been caught all year uh, in 20 attempts. Uh, what are the most striking things to you, buddy, uh, about his defense? Uh, you know, not, well, I guess mostly just this year, but I know you've always thought he had some tools back there. Yeah. Well, I think that, well, the thing that stands out the, the most, and, you know, it's hard not to see the arm strength. I mean, he's got a cannon. And arguably, he might have the strongest arm in the league as far as just pure arm strength. And when the ball comes out of his hand, you know, the velocity on it. So uh, pure arm strength. And uh, I think the second half of the season, he's shown a great deal of accuracy uh, with his throws as well. I mean, we can, you know, how about a couple of those throws that he's made to third base yeah. in critical situations to, to help us win games? Uh, you know, you know, throwing guys out at second uh, with, you know, precision throws. So, uh, I mean, that's the thing that stands out the most that every, that's obvious, but, you know, the, the, you know, the finer points of catching the, the blocking technique, <clears throat> his receiving of the ball, <clears throat> his hands, uh, plays at the plate, uh, pop-ups, uh, all those things, he's very solid. And I got to give <clears throat> Mike Redman and Aaron Munoz a lot of credit for their work with <clears throat> Elias and also with Dom. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Dom coming to this level for the first time and, and Dom seeing the difference between big league games and minor league games. But with Elias, uh, I mean, just marked improvement. I think Mike and Aaron would be, uh, you know, probably for you, uh, Patrick being the next catcher. Uh, you know, to really talk uh, about the position with those two guys o off the record, on the record, whatever. But <clears throat> I mean, he, he has showed up uh, defensively all year and with the bat, like we've, like we've talked about the last few months, uh, really impressive. So, you know, he's, you know, he's putting up, you know, some numbers both offensively and defensively, defensively that are very impressive. Rockies fans have been uh, waiting for a long time to see a catcher who can be both good defensively behind the plate and hit for some power, driving some runs, hit some critical home runs. Uh, I don't, I'm, don't expect you to pr project too far into the future, but as it stands right now and into 2022, can he be that catcher or is he that catcher that this franchise has been wanting? Well, yeah, he, I mean, he's, uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, has really proven to be a very solid major league catcher. <clears throat> now, again, I'm a tough judge, right? I've seen Posey his entire career, uh, up close and personal as you have in the National League West. Uh, I've seen Molina, top-notch catcher, uh, Rio Muto, uh, all-star uh, for the last, what, handful of years. <clears throat> Young Will Smith in L.A. is a fine catcher. Uh, doesn't throw like Elias. Uh, I mean, there's some good young ones uh, and some veteran catchers around who are, you know, very solid. But you can put Diaz in the conversation in a lot of the skill sets, right? Uh, catcher power, uh, he's up there. Uh, catcher arm strength, he might have the best in all of all 30 catchers. I haven't seen a lot of the American League catchers, but uh, I would argue that he was at least in the top three of every catcher, uh, you know, playing today in the big leagues. And I'll count all 60 catchers, two on each team. Uh, you know, he does a really nice job of blocking. Uh, his hands are soft. I mean, he, he's, he's a good one. And I think uh, going into next year, we feel good about that position. Now, <clears throat> you know, Dom has to do some things with the bat uh, next year. We can't, you know, obviously have that, uh, 
you know, what uh, Dom's provided, but I think, you know, Dom is, he's in his, he's got five months in the big leagues. So, uh, you know, let's just give Dom some time and just see where we are with both those guys. Great. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Groke. Yeah. Hey buddy. Last night you had, um, you had Daniel Bard there in the sixth. Uh, yep. I'm guessing that it was uh, matchups, some right-handed matchups that were favorable. Um, but it was also, it was a high leverage. It was going to be a high leverage inning. What, what was your, idea um using him a little bit earlier in a game nick you sound like you sound like a pitching coach or manager right with uh, talking right-handed slot talking leverage against the heart of their order uh, uh all that yes uh, yes to the above uh, i think that uh you know we felt john was done uh, after five two runs uh 90 pitches hot night uh you know i you know i think that was enough for john <clears throat> and then you know working through uh from the you know, ninth inning back, uh, you know, we felt good if, if the game stayed close, you know, Carlos would have the ninth. Uh, we felt good about Shashin and his performance in the eighth. Uh, <clears throat> Kinley had a couple of days off. He was rested. Uh, we felt good about him uh, in the, either the sixth or the seventh. So then for us, it came down to matchups with, uh, you know, with Daniel and his ability, uh, strong ability to, to get right-handers out. And that was a right-handed slot that we felt that, you know, those guys were going to hit, you know, the Braves weren't going to pinch hit Peterson or Andrianza. Uh, <clears throat> we felt that so, uh, you know, Daniel could go through that group. Um, so you're right on and what you're, you're, you're right on. You asked the right question. Okay, but cool. Then you, and, yeah. But, but then you answer it yourself. Yeah. I didn't mean to, I, I was just, you know, trying to get on. It's the okay. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, uh, your answer is more important than mine. The, but you you, um, it has nothing to do with, with trying to get, Daniel out of the eighth inning or anything. You're just no, okay. No. That was an important inning. At, yeah, it was. You know, at that point, it was it was four to two. At that point, or was it five to two? I think it was five to two. But still, we had 12 outs to get. We just got 15 outs. We still had half the game left. And they're all important. Uh, but I thought that was a good spot for Daniel. Right. So uh, I'm, I guess my ultimate question then is where I'm leading. Um, I know how you feel about the ninth inning and wanting a ninth inning pitcher, but you you're pretty open to like the the previous relief innings though i think and trying to find the best spots for those guys yes and those out and those are important too and i think that you know for us to win a game or or any team to win a game where you go to your bullpen in the fifth inning you know to win it all four guys or three how many you use have to pitch well because you have one one guy who falters you know that you're in trouble i mean the, the game can swing the other way so you know, bullpen reliability and bullpen performance from, you know, anywhere from three or four guys is critical to win a game. And that's where you need the consistency of performance. And if you have nine or 10 guys in the bullpen, uh, you need six, seven of them pitching well. So you bring those guys into the game uh, when you have a lead. Hey, gotcha. Thanks, buddy. Yep. <clears throat> Hey, buddy, a um, couple of things. I wanted to follow up on something on what Patrick was asking about. When you look at Diaz going into next year, I know this is a difficult place to, um, or, or should I say Coors Field is a difficult place to ask a lot of a catcher, but can he give you 100 games behind the plate? Um, yes. With the durability that he has. Yes. Um, and, and what have you seen out of just him, the toughness, durability, um, just the way that he's built that, uh, yeah, that, that uh, you know, it's a combination of, you know, the physical strength and the durability and the, and the work capacity and also mentally, uh, you know, to be able to withstand the rigors of catching and, and mentally feel fresh and know that you're fine to, to play that many games. It's a mindset. It, it truly is. You can't, uh, you know, a guy who plays every day uh, never talks himself into being tired or talks himself into, I need a day off. I mean, they're just wired to play every day. Uh, you know, I, I understand the position. I understand the altitude. Uh, I mean, I get it, but, and I get it, you know, the rigors of today are maybe a little bit different than they were a generation ago, but I played against a guy in Baltimore who was a shortstop who played a lot <laughs> and that, and that was amazing. So, you know, and, 
and we don't we don't ask guys i mean that's uh, obviously that's a rare uh, that's a rare bird no doubt Ooh, no pun intended but <laughs> uh but guys can do it but it's a you know it's 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 a mentality and obvious and obviously a work capacity and a physical component as well Hey, the um, the maybe the rigors are different, but the equipment's a lot better now. So why not? Why not? Times. Um, with uh, the way that Tyler Kinley has shown up recently, I mean, is he working himself um, later in games? Or where do you see him going if yeah. if it continues? <clears throat> yeah. Well, you've noticed how we've used him, uh, you know, yeah. over the course of the year, and right now he's in a good spot. I mean. Had a tough, had a you know tough game the other day with the two homers against uh, Harper and Miller, but uh, he's been throwing the ball really consistently well. Uh, and I I commented yesterday, somebody asked me why, <clears throat> and I think it's you know again he's in the strike zone with with really powerful stuff, right? The the, the velocity fastball <clears throat> and the hard slider, and I think yesterday it was a a prime example of the of the strike throwing. Look at the ball strike ratio uh, yesterday in, in that game in his inning against the Braves. So uh, that's the key to get Tyler in the strike zone, get the other team swinging, uh, you know, not letting them think that they can get back into the count. Uh, don't let them think that they can get ahead in the count because of his, uh, you know, maybe a little variability in the in the ball strike ratio, but. Uh, more often than not, the last month, it's been a lot of strikes. And one more from me. Um, Garrett Hampson, he's had a lot of ups and a lot of downs this season, but he just keeps kind of coming to play every day. I mean, is, is that his strength? Just a lot of mental toughness there to be able to put up with um, some of the struggles he's had. And keep yeah. Well, you know, like all players, I mean, Hampy has a lot of confidence in, in himself as a player. And, you know, we have confidence in him as well. And, you know, because we've seen the, you know, we've seen his talent show up in a lot of different ways. And, you know, he's as frustrated as anybody when, uh, you know, he chases a slider out of the zone. He'll chase the high fastball. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he'll do some things that he's really trying to correct. But, again, experience, repetition will help will help help Garrett. I think we have seen a little bit of a reduction uh, in his chase rate, uh, especially on the breaking ball. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's, you know, the last few days have, have shown what he can do, right? Homer uh, in Philadelphia, uh, short, quick stroke, uh, base hit yesterday up the middle to knock in a run. Uh, some opposite field power off the wall uh, that Solaire could not get, turned it into a triple tagged up on a, you know, medium fly ball, scored a run. So those are the things we're looking for with Hampy. And I, and I think yesterday I mentioned it starts with, you know, his uh, increased on base percentage. I think that's the, the biggest thing because I do think the, he's, he should hit more than 240, as does he. And I think his walk rate should be higher and the strikeout rate should be less. Uh, so I think more balls will, should be put in play, uh, which could equate to hits. And more walks are uh, on the horizon, which will increase the on-base performance, his ability to get on base and score runs. And just to follow up, I mean, do you think that maybe you're looking for someone that in into this year, going into the next year, you could say, hey, that guy's my leadoff hitter, or is it something that you're uh, – that, that you know, you could be variable with uh, throughout a full season? Yeah, we'll be, very, we'll be very flexible with that, Thomas, based on what happens in the wintertime for sure. Uh, you know, Garrett has a lot of experience as a leadoff hitter. Going back to Reno Little League, I'm sure he led off. Uh, he led off at uh, Long Beach State. He led off in the minors uh, in our organization. So he's got a lot of experience, but he'll be the first to tell you, I need to get on base more to be, a you know, an impactful leadoff hitter. I mean, you, you got to get on base. That's part of leading off the game is having an on-base percentage, which is, you know, you'd like to have it above major league average. Yeah, top you the same way, I guess, right? Exactly. Two guys that yes. have let off, but been inconsistent. Hey, thanks, buddy. You got it, Tom. Right, we're going to Owen Bergen's been a